Thanks for joining me on this episode. I appreciate you taking time to visit my workshop and today we're going to be talking about this traditional bustle I've been working on. It's not quite done yet. We're only about halfway there, but I wanted to take time to show you how I got this far on the bustle and a few tips and tricks there on extending the feathers and putting things together. And one of the things that I really like about this is a new technique uh, I'm working on as far as stringing the bustle together. A lot of bustles will normally have beads in between the feathers to space them out here on this bridle string and you'll notice on this one I don't have that. And, I, and there's a very specific reason for that and I want to share that with you because I think that was one of the things uh, I like the most about this. For those of us who wear bustles while we're dancing, one of the most difficult things is very simply transportation. Getting that bustle to and from the powwow without ruining the feathers. And uh, one of the things that I did with this was employed a, a trick I got from a good friend of mine years ago. And I want to share that with you. Because the nice thing about this is I can simply fold it down just like that. Now it's ready to fold down, compact, put that into a case nice and neatly, and transport that safely. You know, as we see on this one, this was just another small bustle of mine, some imitation red tail hawk feathers I did years ago, but I actually put beads in between those and have it set up so it projects out as a disc in more old style fashion. It doesn't lay down flat, it doesn't really transport well without the feathers getting messed up. So this idea where I can fold this down into a nice case, I love that and I want to share that with you so if you stay tuned, I'm going to go through the process of how I did each one of these feathers from start to finish and hopefully have a few other tips for you as well. Okay, I got the bustle put back together and now I want to walk through all the different steps on what I did for each of the feathers for um, extending and so forth. The feathers I used on this bustle are actually a natural black turkey feather that I bleached out and I don't have any more of those today that I want to use on this demonstration. I've got some other turkey feathers here that I'm going to work with. One of the first things I did was soak them in water. Just like your fingernails cut a little bit easier after you get out of the shower, I'll soak the tips in water a little bit and they cut a little bit easier. Now what I did for each of the feathers, I cut all the feathers the exact same length. So if I measured that out, mark it, I'm going to bring this up and measure it where I want that to be. Now I did that, keeping all the feathers the same length. And then I adjusted the length of the dowel rod itself in order to get the different lengths of the feathers. By soaking the quill here, you'll see that I'm able to cut that off without getting the quill, there goes a piece, splitting out because um, they can be very fragile. We don't want that to split. I'm going to pull out some of that pith that was on the inside, set that aside. In extending the, the feathers, um, I don't put glue up inside. Instead, what I'm going to do is put the dowel rod in. And if you've seen some of my other videos, I use heat shrink tubing. The heat shrink tubing to put them together works really well. And it comes in a variety of styles and sizes. There are some others here. You can get them black, yellow. I don't really care about the color because I'm going to be covering that up later. I take my uh, my dowel rod, put a little bit of a point on that, just put it in the um, pencil sharpener. For the dowel rod, try to get one that's the same size as the diameter of your feather so that as you put it in, it's not too large and breaking the quill and cracking it out. And if it's too small, it makes a large drop from the feather to the dowel rod. So try to get one that's about the same size. And I think this one works well. And that's up in as far as it'll go, but I don't need to force it anymore. I'm going to slide that on just like that. 
and do the same thing for this one. And again, even after I cut it, I put it back in the water a little bit, make sure that this is soft and malleable, so it's less likely to crack as I'm inserting the dowel rod. Now again, the feathers are the same length, but we'll notice that the, the dowel rods might not be exactly where I want, and that's okay. I'll cut those later to the length that I want. For myself, I generally only cut the length of that no more than half the length of the feather itself. That's personal preference. Do what you like. I don't like to have a lot of dowel rod, small amount of feather. Now, excuse the noise here for a second. Let me take, make sure this is in position, and use my heat gun. This shrinks right down, gives a nice tight hold. If you wanted to, and you don't mind the expense, you could run your heat shrink tubing the whole length of what you want, and you won't get this extra ridge here where the heat shrink tubing comes back down to the dowel rod. Um, frankly, it's so small, I don't think it's going to be noticeable whether you wrap it with some crochet yarn or you're wrapping with tape or you're doing like I did on this one, sewing wool over the top. It's not that noticeable. And there we go. Quick and easy dowel rod extensions in place. Just be careful. It's still hot, so be careful when handling that, but you'll see it shrinks down nicely, and that gives a good hold. That's not going to pull out very easily, just as long as you leave plenty here on the dowel rod, plenty of friction between the dowel rod. Don't try to skimp by doing a really short one. Leave an inch overlapping on the feather and the dowel rod. That'll hold very securely. Now, uh, go on to this next part. We need to do a couple more things. We need to add on a loop at the end after we cut off this where you want it to be. And we need to add a loop up here for the bridle string that runs through. I'm gonna show you how to do those. Now, what I did with the feathers on the bustle, the ones down at the bottom of the feather are actually shorter and I increased the length as you go up towards the top of the bustle. And I did that by taking the length of the shortest feather down at the bottom, and then I added half a centimeter to the dowel rod length as I continued up. For those of you not familiar with the metric system, half a centimeter turns out to be about 3 16ths of an inch, pretty close. Um, so I would lay these out, measure where I want it to be. Let's say I'm going to measure this one. From the base of the feather, I'm going to come down 10 centimeters. And since I cut the feathers the exact same length, I'm going to come down to 10 and a half centimeters on this one, make it just a little bit longer. And I would have did the same on all of those. Keep adding those five millimeters all the way up around so that the feathers at the top, the first ones are a little bit larger making a nice U shape. A couple different ways you can cut these dowel rods. I'm just going to use a quick coping saw here to score that. Just pull back through and that'll score it well enough as I'm turning the dowel rod around in a circle. So I get back to where I started and I know that I've Cut through enough, that'll break off easily. I'm gonna grab a little sandpaper. I'm gonna run the uh, shoestring through here against that, so I don't want that to be too rough. There you go, sand that off. Do my next one. Uh, 
I'm going through this pretty quickly because I don't want you know um, an hour and a half video for you but hopefully this makes sense you do a lot of the same kind of techniques uh, for bustles whether you're doing fancy dance bustles or traditional bustles and really once you have a good plan in place it doesn't take that long I mean you'll have a lot of feathers to work with but it's really not that difficult to get them all together it might seem daunting to do all of this for 30 or 40 feathers but really once you get into the rhythm of it and you have your materials ready it's not that bad okay what we're going to do is uh, again we're putting on the um, loops on the bottom of the dowel rod a lot of different ways you can do that uh, some people like using the zip strips the plastic pieces they're sturdy they'll hold up well i'll bend over nicely tape those or wrap those in place i went ahead and just had some uh, leather thin leather that was going to work well and cut some strips going to fold that over and what i want to do is make sure i have that lined up right down the length of the feather and just eyeball that top and bottom and then as i do that grab my glue and another tool i have that i find incredibly valuable the thread bobbin this thing is uh, a great tool you're going to find this in fly tying shops where they have supplies for fly tying this bobbin holder is wonderful and you'll see in a second how useful that is put on just a little bit of glue there top and bottom put my leather in place and again make sure I have it lined up now I didn't leave space at the bottom for the lace to come through and that's okay I'm going to show you what I do with that in just a second and while I'm holding that in place use my thread bobbin hold the thread with my thumb and start wrapping and make sure I've got that exactly where I want it and right now it's not down too tight I could still maneuver that to where I want it and now I'll go back through and wrap a little bit more neatly one of the nice things about the thread holder I can just let it hang it'll keep tension on there if I need to uh, grab something else just wrap that down nice and tight and again I can keep tension on this to make sure that does pull down tightly I'm not using any special thread here just some cotton thread that I had now I'm all the way down to the end to tie this off make a little loop throw the loop over and pull it tight I'll show you that again I'm gonna make a little loop with the thread lay the loop over top slide it down to where I want it tighten it down I can snip off those ends there we go now one more thing that I like to do I did glue it on I wrapped it tightly but I'm gonna pull out my nail varnish this is the rapid top coat and coat the threads this rapid dry top coat just helps to seal it and make sure that it's gonna the threads are not going to come unwrapped shouldn't be a problem um, this dries really fast and holds well a little bit better than super glue and again quick and easy can hit it with a hair dryer and yep it's already dry so there we have the loops on that one and do the loop on this one real quickly Got a little 
blue spill on my desk, but that's all right. Put a little glue on here. Get our leather. Fold that over. Line it up where I want it. Get the wrapping started. Make any adjustments. And now finish wrapping that all the way down. I'm going to try to keep it nice and neat, but really uh, it won't matter so much what this looks like. It's all going to get covered up because I'm going to be sewing the wool over top of it. Loop. Cinch it down. Little loop. Cinch it down. Cut that off. Cut that off. And there we go. Put our nail varnish on here. Again, that works really well to simply hold that in place, make sure it's not going to come undone. There we go. Those are done. Now, I had mentioned that I did not really leave space in here for the shoestring to go through and I don't need to because I can take my awl, push that through and that will stretch the leather enough to make the perfect size hole for what I need. So just take that through and done. That way I don't have to try and hold the leather in place or the zip tie in place where I want the hole as far as how far out I need that to be. Now, the next thing I'm going to do, here's the, the secret to getting the bustle so it will collapse. We need a guide string at this end that we can put the shoelace through without the beads. And it needs to be tight enough that the friction on that loop will hold the feather in place along that string. I'm going to do pretty much the exact same thing as I did before. I'm simply going to do just a small amount of glue on the leather here. And while holding that in place, I'm on the back side of the feather. Wrap this down nice and tight. I'm going to wrap this for about a centimeter here and again do a loop and slide it down basically doing a half hitch another half hitch cinch it down tight cut the tags off now again I'm just going to leave some space right here for the loop to be formed. So I'm going to wrap the thread down and I've got oh, about a centimeter there. Not quite half an inch, I suppose. Wrap that in place. Again. Quick half hitch loop. Do two of them. Cinch it down. Cut the threads. I'm going to cut off the excess 
leather. So there I have that, just that simple. And same thing, I'm going to take my awl, take that underneath the leather, and poke that through. And now I have my loop for the bridle string. Just that simple. You don't have to do anything fancy. Just uh, tie that in place where you want it to be and create the, uh, the loop by running the all through. And that'll be enough space um, to get the aglet on the shoestring through there. And I, I chose like a, a round or oval shoestring so it takes up a little bit more space and a lot of surface area for that to grip onto. Now, one more thing I wanted to talk to you about real quickly is uh, putting on the feathers front and back on each of the feathers. Large fluff here, but I don't need this full fluff. I just have a couple of them. I want, I only need about that much from each feather. So I'm going to use just the tip of my scissors right down next to the rachis. Snip that off. The same thing. I'm not just, don't just come in and cut the whole thing off. You're going to lose a lot of that fluff. It'll be even more of a mess than it already is. Just the tip of my scissors right down at the base, right through there. You can still save that. You might be able to use those bits of fluff for something else. But I take these two together. And I'm going to lay them over top where I want them on my feather. Hold them in place while I do a couple quick wraps. Again, hold those. Do Couple feathers for the back side. I lost it. There it is. There we go. Hold those in place. Finish wrapping that. And again, throw on a half hitch loop, snug it down. And after I cut those off, again, I'm going to come to my hard as nails top coat, cover the threads for everything I wrapped so far. The bridle loop and the feathers. Plumes. Cover that up. And again, that dries quickly. I like to get the, draft, the rapid dry top coat. So that doesn't take long at all. So, not a lot at the base, but just enough. Give that some, some color and, and movement. At this point, you can use some tape. You can get multicolored electrical tape. A lot of people are going with that. And you can use some different threads, crochet thread if you want to thread it. It doesn't matter how you cover that up to make some decoration and design. Um, what I chose to do on the bustle was actually I stitched in place some wool. I got some remnant wool from Teton Trade Cloth. They've got a lot of great things. So basically, I like the color. And because of the striping on that broadcloth, that gives it some design by itself. And I don't have to go back and thread wrap anything. This is a strip of uh, wool felt. You can find this on eBay. This is the same wool felt binding they use on Pendleton blankets. It's already a nice um, width 
to wrap around and stitch that in place to the length that you need. I like that, works really well. It takes a little bit more time to stitch that in place, but again, to each their own, do what you like and do what you're happy with, really. That's what's most important. So hopefully this has been helpful as I ran through some things pretty quickly on how to prepare each of your feathers. But uh, while I only did a couple of quick ones here as a demonstration, the fe each feather on the bustle got the exact same treatment. And then I laid them out, of course, pulled them together with the base string, the bridle string going through here. And again, without beads in the middle, I was able to collapse that down. I really like that feature. So I hope some of these were some helpful tips. Um, I'm going to come back and do another video in the future as I finish this bustle up. A few more things I want to do to this, but thank you for watching and uh, good luck with your craft work.